All right, so to get started, we're going to create a horizontal alignment first. So we need a horizontal alignment, a vertical profile, and a typical section. We'll start with the horizontal alignment. Now, because we have the, um, the line work already in our, our project, we've, we've got that green center line, that is our horizontal alignment. So we're going to use that one um, to create the alignment. Now, most of the work is going to be done on the corridor tab. So as you see here, I'm going to start over in the far left, and I'm going to start by creating my alignment. There's a couple different things you can do, different ways of doing this. Again, this is very simple. It's a straight line. It's got really no vertices in it. Um, so it's, it's going to be pretty easy. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit deeper into creating curves and other stuff later on. But um, we'll go ahead and create an alignment. We'll move this guy over a little bit so you can see it. Uh, we want to give this a name, so we'll call this uh, Paisley. And we want to put it on a layer. Um, you probably, again, in your drawing or project template, you want to have some predefined layers. So since I don't have the one that I'm looking for here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in. I'm going to use a dollar sign. We'll go DES-CL alignments. Again, that's just so I know that these are my center lines. Um, I could just call it center line alignments. While I'm here, maybe I want to use a red color. And for a line style, maybe, you know, I want to use the center line as a line style. And I can even put a thickness on here. So if I wanted to kind of make this bolder, I could, you know, thicken it up. But I'm just going to click OK. Now, you don't have to put it on a layer. It's recommended. That way you can kind of help organize and be able to export this out later. So we'll leave, we'll leave it there. Um, I'm going to define, uh, actually define it by using a, an, an existing line. So we could define it with ind individual segments where you could actually go in and, and define it that way. But I'm just going to use an existing line. And I'm going to uh, set focus down here under, under line. Okay. And I'm just going to come out and I'm just going to grab and select or left click on that CAD polyline. All right. Now, there is no spirals or anything like that that I'm putting in. So I don't have to worry about this option here. I'm just going to click OK, and that is going to create uh, my alignment. You can see it's a red line up here. Down below, you get this viewer that allows you to go in and look at the data in your of your alignment. So we've got a POB. We've got a length of 907.02. Um, <clears throat> okay. Over here, you can see behind me, I'll step out of the way, you got some uh, stationing and a northing and easting. So the northing and easting is the start of our line over there. And I want that actually to match up. So before I get into do the vertical, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to put this in at uh, five, uh, 500 plus zero, zero. So it's basically just um, uh, 50,000 is what I'm putting in. Right? That's just the stationing that was used in the design. Okay. The northing and easting are going to stay uh, you know, the way they are. So I'm just going to enter, enter, and enter one more time. And you can see that my uh, station for the end of my line has now been uh, recalculated or readjusted. Okay. Now, it is a line. It shows my azimuth. There's my azimuth of the line as well. And then I could just come down here, and I could actually put in um, another segment off the end of this line. So off the end over here, if I was, you know, wanted to put in a curve, I could do that. So here... You know, you could put in an, an arc, and then within that arc, it can be a tangential arc, and the direction I'm going to the left or to the right, and then um, put in the, the length and so, you know, of that arc, okay? Or, you know, I could put in uh, some other parameters like delta um, as well. So ideally, depending on what you're putting in, your spiral in, you know, if you're putting in those first and then an arc, you can set those in there. Um, you can also put a north azimuth instead of a tangential, so if it isn't a tangential arc in most cases for road it is but if you're doing a creek or a stream bed or something you it might not be then you could put in a an azimuth for the cord um and then put in a radius of the arc and so on and so forth so again depending on your curve geometry you can create and edit your alignment okay so we're just going to click up there we're going to ignore or not put in anything else we're going to keep it that way so that's pretty much it i mean that that's that's a horizontal alignment if we um uh, close this window, get out of it. We've got a horizontal alignment. Um, but we, what we want to do next, as you can see, you've got some, some tabs over here, horizontal, vertical. Um, you can put in station equations as well as, you know, getting into super elevation. So 
if you've got a highway or a road or whatever and you're applying super elevation to it, um, Business Center can handle that. Okay. But what we want to get into next is we want to look at the vertical alignment. <clears throat> the vertical alignment allows us to um, basically create the, the val or the horizontal uh, profile or the, I'm sorry, the vertical profile of our horizontal alignment. So basically what is the road doing in its elevation mode? All right. Um, so when we click the vertical tab, we're going to go over to the create vertical alignment button here and we're going to select that. You'll notice that the stationing gets populated from our horizontal alignment. So this is something too, just as, as a note, is if you're, you go and create your vertical and then you go back and change the stationing of your alignment, you're going to want to go back and change and set your point, your beginning point to match your beginning point of your vertical alignment or maybe where your vertical curve begins on your alignment. Otherwise, it's not going to match up. All right, so you want to make sure that you set that if you need to. Uh, now, the first point is, you know, my first point of beginning, I need an elevation for that. So what I'm going to do, and I can do a couple different things. Um, I could come up here and create another plan view and I can then zoom in on my profile over here okay and if I set these two as a vertical tab okay so now I can see my horizontal I can see and pan around in my vertical while I create my vertical profile All right so if I zoom in I've got my Five plus zero zeros or 500 plus zero zeros is 9.65. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to just type in 9.65. Now, this particular road has just a bunch of grade breaks. All right. So I'm going to pan over to my next one and I see the grade break and I see the stationing there. So I'm going to pick in here. So it's going to come in here. I'm going to type in 501.35. I'm going to press enter and I'm going to type in 10. Point Two zero zero. So what it's doing is it's I'm just putting in that, that grade break. So um, I can also create a vertical profile if I wanted to. Um, and because we have the ability to float these screens, we can actually put that on another monitor. Um, but I'm just going to keep everything right here as I go through this. So I'm just going to pan over. Um, and while I'm doing this, I can take a look and t see what's going on with my um, uh, my grades. So right there I've got a, here I got a slope of 0.41, here I have a slope of uh, 0.48. So what I immediately did was I skipped this very first grade break. All right, so what I might have to do is come back over here. And if I select this row, I can insert a row. So I'm inserting another grade break. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to put in 500, 1, 0, and I'm going to tab or enter and put in 9.6 uh, for that one. So instead of 9.65 is 9.6. When I press enter, I've got a negative 0.5%, which is right there. And now you can see my slope of 0.48 is now coming back up. So what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I didn't miss or skip anything as I go through this. So I'm just going to, again, pan over a little bit more. I'm going to get to my next one. And I'm going to come down for the next grade break. And we'll put in 50250, press enter, and 9.6. And press enter there, check my grade, a negative 0.52. Work my way down. And a couple more here, I got 50350, and we've got a 10.10 uh, grade break. So again, coming up and Come back to the next to this one. We'll go 504, 40, 9.6. So again, just plugging this information in uh, and verifying 0.56. Right. Um, again, multiple different ways of doing this. If you were doing this, and as kind of from a design standpoint, um, <clears throat> you may be. Uh, what I would recommend is maybe use a, a a line. Actually, create a line string in your plan view and set your vertical information the way you want. And then when you actually turn that line into a, an alignment, the, and it's because it is a 3D line, it'll automatically create the vertical profile for you. So again, multiple different ways of using these tools. 
again, just want to make sure that you understand the basics so that you can get started and then you know learn some of these other features as you go. So 11.1 .1 for that one. <clears throat> we'll come over to this. It's 507.65, and we've got a 10.5. And then the last one, 508.97 and 11.3. And then we've got that last little grade break there being 509.07.03 and then 11.5. So that is our vertical profile and I'll enter it in and again we're just checking the grades we got that 1.99 all right so that looks good there um, if I close this I can come up to also to profile view and now over here you can see that I'm looking at that Paisley profile and if I just exaggerate the profile you can see that I've got the uh, the grade breaks going in there okay um, if I close this and we go back and we pick that alignment and go and edit the alignment you can see if I go to vertical one of the things that um, I could also do that I didn't show you because I don't have any vertical curves in this particular design but if I did I'd be able to basically choose the type instead of a grade break I could choose a symmetrical vertical curve asymmetrical vertical curve uh, a vertical arc or uh, end of a symmetrical curve. So depending on what you have, if this I want to put a symmetrical vertical curve in here, I would change it and you can see that now I can put in the other curve data, another curve information such as K value, curve length, so on and so forth. Okay. So again, you, you've got plenty of options. It's got all the right you know, functionality and tools in there to create that uh, vertical profile. So close this out. I'm going to close that plan view as well. So I'm left with just this plan view. So that's pretty much creating the horizontal and the vertical alignment. Again, there's a lot more functionalities, a lot more features goes in depth. We're just going to start simple. So if you're not using this data set, you want to create your own, just strike a straight vertical or horizontal line and then add some elevations to it and you can create your vertical profile uh, you know, to kind of practice with. Um, what I'm going to get into next, what I'm going to show you next, is actually we're going to take this vertical alignment and we're going to develop the cross-section template from our PDF plan set.